So in the last video, we went over the key takeaways for the real estate market in 2023 for the city of Toronto. In this video, we're gonna break down each one individually to really give you a good picture of what's been happening in the Toronto real estate market for 2023, what we're expecting in 2024, and how it looks going into 2024. I'm Michael Luzes, I'm a realtor here in Toronto, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the last video with the key takeaways and what you think we're gonna see in 2024's real estate market. If you ever wanna book in a call with me, click on that first link in the description down below. There are a few key factors factors when it came to looking at the data for Toronto real estate. The news articles will be all over the fact that Toronto posted its lowest sales on record in at least 20 years and that prices are down about 5% across the board. But there is more context to that and that's why in this video we're going to go through each factor that really made those two things happen because they are pretty significant when we look at Toronto real estate. Let's start here in the greater Toronto area market stats. Average price for the year ended up being 1.1 million twenty six thousand six hundred and four dollars which is a 5.4 percent drop on average from prices in 2022 now let's put some context into why exactly that means in 2022 we saw the peak of pricing which is hard to believe that was almost two years now once we hit february march of 2024 when we factor in the average sale price dropping 5.4 percent it's really important to note that in february 2022 we saw prices hit their absolute peak and that played a big factor when it came to pricing for 2022 as the rest of the year once those rates started increasing prices definitely started falling off from there if we jump over to Toronto proper we're seeing that the average sale price in Toronto is give or take just under 1.1 million so basically 1 million 97 thousand which is also down 3.8 percent from 2022 and also again same factor is that in the first part of 2022 that's when prices hit their max and those prices played a big factor in the year-over-year -year price being down 3.8 percent the second element that's super important to take note of for the city of Toronto is the months of inventory now in Toronto specifically especially when it comes to condos condos have been driving the number of inventory across all home types up significantly when it comes to looking for single-family homes such as semis detached or even townhouses those properties have been a little more covered and there is not nearly as much inventory as when it comes to Toronto condos. When we think about months of inventory, zero to two months equals a seller's market. When we get into three to five months, we're in a balanced market. At anything five months and above, we're into a buyer's market. Why that's important is that for condos right now, we are sitting in a buyer's market at over five months of inventory. And for detached properties or single family homes, we're closer to that two to three months of inventories. Two totally different products are performing very very differently and also on a different micro market level this might be the most important chart of all when it comes to the data for 2023 and it tells a really good story of what's happened in the market last year in December we saw one of the lowest transactions and number of sales in a very long time and we actually beat that in December of 2023 consumer confidence in December 2022 was fairly low as there was not a ton of sales. The average price was about 1,050,000 just over. And then trending into January, we saw even less sales and a lower average price. At the end of January, on January 25th to be exact, that's when the Bank of Canada held the overnight lending rate to 4.5%, which sparked a mass amount of consumer confidence back into the market. We saw prices jump from 1,040,000 basically to just under 1.1 million, hitting a high of almost 1.2 million in May, which is about a 15% jump from January through May of 2023. We saw a pretty strong number in June at 1.18 million. And then in June, the Bank of Canada decided to raise the rate 0.25%. That's when things dropped about $70,000 right off the bat. And they raised the rate again in July. This is where things really slowed down. And we saw the price point drop once again in August, which typically does as we head through the summer and then prices just kind of flattened out for the rest of the year we thought we would see a lot more activity in the fall market but we actually didn't get that we saw three of the slowest months on record when it came to Toronto real estate active listings also pop from about 9,000 at the start of the year to 18,000 19,000 in September so basically doubled and 19,500 was the peak of listings in October which if we take a look to December listings have dropped almost 50 percent 
since. And this is something that I will say is one of the key factors for the year is that active listings have been slowly dropping as we've headed through the year. And this is noted in the months of inventory, which we're back down to about three right now. At the end of last year, we were at 2.79, which crept up to three in January and then quickly dropped down to 1.3 in May. As the months of inventory comes down, we typically see prices go up. So if we're in a three months of inventory, which is that cusp of a balanced market, typically prices remain relatively stable. Once we get in the one and a half range, like we saw in May of 2023, prices were at their peak. And if we see four or five months of inventory, typically we see prices come down as well. Days on market, the last factor here was about a month in December and dropped down to about half a month in May and June, and then back up to about a month in December of 2023. I thought this was a great chart to bring up as this shows the average sales price and the Bank of Canada overnight rate. If you're waiting for rates to drop in 2024 to get into the market, this is the chart for you. Back in March 2020, we saw the overnight lending rate at 0.25%, represented by these dots in blue. Average sale price for the Greater Toronto Area was just over 800,000 at that time. As that rate held steady at 0.25, we saw prices go from just over 800,000 to just over $1.3 million. That's quite a significant jump in about two years time. As the rates started to increase, we saw prices decrease and they, they kind of hit their match here in June of 2022. As we went along through 2022, the overnight rates started to increase, starting with that big jump in July and another big jump into September. We saw prices drop into the end of 2022 as rates continued up their way to 4.5%. Once the Bank of Canada paused in January, we saw prices increase almost 15%, basically from January through May and June. The Bank of Canada then decided to raise the rate by 0.25% in June and then another 0.25% in July, which basically dropped prices once again. Now as they're holding rates at 5%, prices seem to have been relatively stable since, especially as we headed through these slower months of November and December. I thought that was a super important chart to point out because as rates drop, prices typically go up because then the buyer affordability gets higher. That being said, when rates do drop, typically that brings more buyers to the table and more competition when it comes to purchasing property. So that's something just to keep in mind as we look at that chart and show a really good illustration of what low rates mean for the Toronto real estate market. I'd love to hear your comments down below on this 2023 overview and what you think is in store for 2024. I'm Michael Luzis. Thanks for watching.